results contribute to the authenticity of these bodies. Sorry. <laughs> Why would you hurt me? I think you know. Okay, we are going to start all over again. Finally, as a result of our investigations, the research team has come to the conclusion that the desiccated bodies studied are completely authentic from a That letter that we were presenting, 11 scientists signed that letter saying that the bodies are true. If we can hear what the conclusion says, please, can we go back to the university letter after the bodies, please? Sorry, sorry, more, more. 
No, no, vas, 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 vas. There. Okay. A little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. Okay. Right there. Sorry. This is important because this is the conclusion of the University of Icar after four years investigating this body. Please. <laughs> Finally, as a result of our investigations, the research team has come to the conclusion that the desiccated bodies studied are completely authentic from a biological point of view and show no signs of having been manipulated or assembled in any way. Our scientific approach has been rigorous and the results contribute to the authenticity of these bodies. Jerry Jamin is very important in this investigation. He sent a letter to the Ministry of Culture saying that he had this finding and he wanted them to participate 2017 here. To, uh, and then he sent a letter to the president of Peru. And we didn't receive any answer. Then in July 2017, I went to the Ministry of Peru to ask them to participate in the investigation. They didn't want to do anything, you know? I tried and tried. We gave a press conference the 11th of July, the day before I went there. I asked them to come to the press conference because we want to present all the evidence. They didn't want to do it. Can you see the resistance? Then in 2023, I went back with my lawyer Dr. Rafael Berrocal, we went together and he witnessed how we were treated. They, even though we announced that we were going, we announced that we wanted to talk to the, to the Minister of Culture and she didn't want to. Okay, these are the bodies that we have found. M Victoria, we made all the DNA samples from Victoria. It's a headless, and that's the reason we decided to take the samples from this body. That's Victoria. We call it that way. The headless figure or creature. Tridactyl creature. Then we have Albert or Alberto. Albert is right now at the University of Ica. It's different. Every single being has a different personality, has a different face, has a different body, exactly like humans. This is Albert. We made all the analysis, tomographies, everything we could. We, do, we did the DNA. Can you say this is a fake? Can you see this is a the head of a llama? Yeah. 
And then we have Josephine. Josephine, it's a very important, it's a female, and was the first time that we found two things. One, that has eggs inside. And the second is that has a metal in the breast. This is Josephine. It was a big surprise when we took her to the, di we thought that the, a fetus was inside. We never thought that eggs were inside. All of these can be analyzed. We need to take these bodies to the US, to a big university, big scientists, and they can investigate them. Okay, in around the, the eggs, you can see irrigation. This is Luisa, another body that we have. You can see the eggs also, Luisa, and you can see how they are irrigated. That's impossible to fake. And we can see, we have seen embryos inside the eggs. Maria, Maria is a human-like body with a, with a huge head, three fingers in every hand and every and the foot. The fingers are long. We're going to have real experts in hand and and neck and head after in this presentation. And they will tell you about this. This is so important. This changes history. This is Santiago, one of the bodies that we're going to present live from Lima today. You can see that it's very close like Maria. It's a three finger body with a large head, different eyes, we didn't touch this body. We didn't do anything to this body. We, we, it was delivered to us. Michael and Serena were there. They can tell you about this. And you will see later on live x-rays, live tomography. And you will hear the experts talking about this. This changes everything. Can you imagine? If they were living with the old humans a thousand or two thousand years ago, did we receive knowledge from them? Or is this a new species? But there is nothing before and nothing after. It's like they appear and disappear suddenly. That's very difficult in nature. In nature, you have development. You will have something before, probably not after if they were extinguished, but before, yes, you have to see slowly this process. Santiago is like a little kid. You will see the fingerprints. The fingerprints are different from humans. That is impossible to fake. You can see the x-rays here. It's like the head of a little boy where there is separation between the different plates of the head. By the way, all this material is going to be available to anyone who wants to see it. We don't have anything to hide. If I were faking this, I wouldn't put it available to everyone. I would try to hide it here and there. No, it's open to everyone. Would you consider I would take the bodies to the Mexican Congress, putting in danger 50 years of career to present fake bodies? Think about that. Because what they've done to me is unacceptable.
and I mean the Ministry of Culture, and I mean the media around the world. I'm surprised the media did not check the source of the Ministry of Culture. They would have realized that it was not the same body. Okay, this is Sebastian. This is another body that we are gonna present today. It has different plates, one in the neck. It has some letters there. We have not been able to identify those letters. I think it's very important. This is very new. This was delivered to us, what, two months ago. Yes, we have not done DNA. Yes, we have not done the proper analysis, the carbon-14, we will. But we wanted to present this to the media and to the world. You can see the eyelashes in the eye. They are so similar to us. Could they be hybrids? Could they have been created by somebody else? Could humans do that a thousand years ago, two thousand years ago? I don't think so. You can see the eyelashes there very clearly, all the details. That's the plate in the back. And you can see letters there. The plate was completely covered with uh, diatomia. Diatomia is where they were found in a, in a mine of diatomia. Diatomia is a, a phytoplankton. Uh, plant or in the, from the sea. It's fossilized and it's used to desiccate. These bodies are desiccated, completely desiccated. They don't have any liquid or oil in their body. This is the plate. What is doing there? Why? So many questions. It's fascinating. Sorry, it's fascinating. Instead of opposing this, Scientists should be, you know, excited about this. This is something we have been looking for humanity for so many years. And it's in the hands of civil society. It's not in the hands of government to hide. It's open. Let's be happy about this. Okay, these are the bodies that have been found and presented until now. But there is so much more. Believe me, this is not the last press conference. This is not the last time that we are going to be presenting bodies. It's going to be more and more and more. Let's see how the world reacts to this. As I said, I've been humiliated. I've been discredited, I've been defamed, and my lawyer is going to speak about that. Okay. I hope you are enjoying this because this is pure history. You are part of history. There would, should be here thousands of media, thousands. This is so important. I have put everything in risk because this cannot be high. We found this in 2017. I made different programs. And every time we found so many obstacles. That's why I had to take them to the Congress of Mexico because David Grosch was talking about Bodies remaining from the craft, from the crashes, and the government didn't want to present them. I thought it was the time to present them to the public. Sorry, I don't want to extend. There are more things to be said. We're going to have a live stream from the University of Ica, and we will have a live stream from a laboratory in Lima, and you will learn so much more about this. I want to introduce Dr. Rafael Berrocal, 
She's a top lawyer in Peru. She's going to talk about the legal gaps under the Constitution, the framework of the Constitution. He's a constitutionalist in Peru. He's a top man regarding law. And he's going to talk now about these legal gaps on the anomalous bodies in the Constitution, not just of Peru, but around the world. Thank you very much. So a large part of this will be in Spanish, so if you do have your headphones now, it would be a great time to pop them in. Uh, if you don't, does anybody need the QR code so that you can log in to hear the translation? Is everybody good? Everybody's good. En primer lugar, buenos días a todos los hombres y mujeres del mundo. Toda vez que estamos en línea en comunicación con los medios de comunicación más importantes en este recinto. Veo con tanta pasión, con tanta emoción y con firmeza, Jaime, hablar sobre los cuerpos, las criaturas tridáctilas encontrados, hallados en el Perú, en mi país en el cual me siento orgulloso, fenomenalmente agradecidos al cielo, a la tierra, al mar, a que realmente existe todavía algo por descubrir en nuestro planeta Tierra. Voy a tocar un tema fundamental de criterio jurídico. Vacíos jurídicos desde el marco constitucional, pero voy a partir, no está por demás, recordar un poco nuestros derechos constitucionales que enmarcan nuestras leyes en todo el mundo. Básicamente voy a partir partiendo del derecho imperativo universal del hombre en el mundo es implacable e indiscutible plasmado en nuestras constituciones de los países del mundo, siendo así el derecho a la vida, el derecho a la libertad el derecho a no estar, no estar sometidos ni a esclavitud como tampoco a tortura. Es un derecho importantísimo a la libertad y otros aspectos y a la opinión pública. Por ende, la expresión a la educación, al trabajo, entre otros, estos derechos corresponden a todas las personas sin discriminación alguna en el universo. Sin embargo, aún no está contemplada la regulación de las normativas sobre el derecho a la libertad del conocimiento en diversas materias, así como respaldar las investigaciones científicas sobre los cuerpos anómalos no identificados, como el de las criaturas tridáctilas, para su análisis y investigación con el fin de llegar a la verdad sobre su existencia. Esto, pongan entre comillas, esto limita y mutila un derecho fundamental, el de la libertad a la educación y el acceso al conocimiento. Por ello, invocamos a los gobiernos del mundo a implementar reformas constitucionales que contemplan en las leyes el desarrollo de la ciencia y la oficialización de la divulgación de información de interés de la sociedad desconocida hasta la fecha. Pues la humanidad tiene el derecho de conocer la existencia de seres no humanos desde antes, durante y después de nuestra existencia. O no tenemos el derecho tenemos el derecho fundamental de conocer lo que dijo y lo que es y lo que será la ciencia en el mundo. Es importante porque The booth apologizes. I cannot hear him. 
Kainash and the skater. In this case, the journalist Kainemarsan and professionals together. Uh, first of all, each of them foster this research of non-identified anomalous events uh, that came to this world or creatures from other spaces. And unfortunately, these researchers have not been able to have the support of the state, and, and they have been object to be defamated that attempt against their professionalism and in other arenas and against uh, scientists, researchers. These affirmations and rights are declarations issued by public officials, mainly since 2018. And for in 2018, there was a declaration included to date with the participation and intervention of the Ministry of Culture at present. And this information and these representations have caused important environmental damage. And these affirmations that were carried out are serious investigations and real investigations and, and under the custody to be studied for scientific reasons. And it's also very important that all these were done by the analysis declared by their authors of the bodies object to the research. And for all of the above, we formalized a judicial process with preliminary acts in order to participate in a reconciliation with the government in order to find solutions of an indemnization lawsuit for 200 million pesos, and I have the honor to tell you that this is priceless. This has no price that can be assigned to it. And for this, and for the attention of the judges and legal jurisdictions, this indemnization uh, has to do with the construction of the Palpanasca region, and that has been mentioned to men and women of the world. I have to add and I have to ask you to please don't eliminate the right, and that's why laws do exist, that we have to perfect the rights and the laws, like in this case, to rule over anomalous bodies and their scientific uh, uh, humankindness uh, as it should be. And this is an imperative right. And there is the importance of the knowledge in order so for our descendants. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. Thank you, sir.
Efectivamente, se ha presentado una demanda por 300 millones de dólares al gobierno del Perú. Creo que esta es la primera ocasión en el mundo, en la historia, que la sociedad civil demanda a un gobierno por distorsionar Uh, we are calling the Peruvian government, and that's what we wish. What we wish is to continue with our research, but we also, those that are here, there's many more bodies here, and this is massive, and we're not going to be able to hide the truth, we're not going to be able to hide them of these bodies. They are being extracted. In, uh, they have been um, dried or desiccated because of uh, the, the, the atomies and the autonomous earth and the, these are bodies that we have to research. We have to show them throughout the world. We have to show the tribute this benefit. This is what we have here to be able to make a change in history. We don't want and we have no other intention. I love Peru deeply. I love the Peruvian government and such an important truth and how serious is this distortion because this is a new species, maybe, maybe they could be aliens, why not? And from day number one, I want to thank deeply and publicly the company that believed in us, Gaia, and only them, and thanks to them, we were able to do the first part of the research. And they received these findings, and they, all people in Peru, the next day, they were writing a letter that I had cut the fingers and I had overposed and uh, other fingers to make these fingers larger and this is not true. So it has to be clear and I said it in Spanish. We have to be very accurate in what's being said and I want to be very accurate because this is so relevant very important for me to say. Okay, now we go to Mexico City. Where is Dr. Salso? Who is Dr. Salso? Dr. Salso, he's a, a doctor, a physician that was uh, formed by the Navy in Mexico. He became the forensic expert of the Navy of Mexico. He became a former director of 42 hospitals or 46 hospitals of the Navy in Mexico. It's not just anybody. We are talking about one of the big experts of Mexico. And he had the courage to, par to participate in this, in this investigation from the very beginning. And he has been punished because of that. I don't want to speak deeply. He has to, but he has been punished. Okay? And let's go then to Mexico City. Uh, are you ready? Están listos en Mexico para iniciar la transmisión, por favor? Adelante. Perfectamente controlable de manera natural por el proceso evolucionario. 
lo cual lo hace completamente diferente a cualquier otro. En el sexo, podemos observar un inicial que es de
to at least the one that I know that will occur in this era. That's the one I think the enemy will get to. El movimiento de mi mano para demostrar que esta fluoroscopía es un procedimiento que permite ver en tiempo real las estructuras óseas. Aquí podemos identificar correctamente y claramente que no hay ningún elemento de armado artificial. De igual manera, podemos observar en el brazo que hay un tabique interóseo, un tabique interóseo, el cual es de gran relevancia porque puede hablar de la evolución o de la involución de la separación de los huesos de la antebrazo. También tuvimos como piezas sueltas manos de 45 centímetros o más. Estas manos son impactantes y impresionantes, ya que permiten determinar la existencia de seis falanges, haciendo la larga de la making it so long and they're confirming movement of grasping things. This, some of these hands have some metallic implants. Uh, that is something that was explained previously and our next uh, specimen was Maria, is Maria. This body is impacting and it's similar to human features. It has bones and it's similar to primate family. It has some characteristics that are similar to the chimpanzee. It has more head bone and it is, it doesn't have ears and it, its body, we did not find breasts. And we can also find the, the three, dac three dactyl, the, the six phalanges and a metacarp, metatarp. And also in the foot, we can see the arc of the foot where the termination of the fingers, we can find digital prints that are unique for them in nature. We can see also the next body that is called Santiago, which is also has three phalanges in its body. In his skull, we can find that it also has a separation of the bones of the skull, but we can see also the teeth, temporary teeth and permanent teeth of a young or child mm, body. We also have Sebastian that is also a a body similar to Maria and Santiago, but it is a, it, it's not that long. In this body, we can see the bones. What it doesn't allow a, a, the, the body to detach from, the head to detach from the body. So it, it's something that we can see, and it's similar as Santiago, Sebastian is, seated and it is mixed on the other side. We have the skull and hands that we can see deeply and we can identify some plaques, metal plaques, plates that we can see right now. That is something like for decoration. So something that we should consider is to recognize and study these three DACA bodies in the public ministry of uh, the Republic of Peru, see that they have three DNAs and they can recognize the biology of these three. And they are also mentioning that it is not possible to say anything about this because it's an DNA that it is not human. This is relevant because they're accepting that we're speaking about a completely different person. They are also recognizing to check this with specialists about other types of specimens or organisms, recognizing that they are different. We're speaking about organisms that at a certain moment are considered something that is not handcrafted or dulled. So 
my conclusions and something that I would like to say that first of all, we can find bodies that are 100% real, organic, functional, with a skull structure, harmonic, functional, and that's some where adults in their reproductive state. As a second conclusion, we can see the possibility of recognizing that we are analyzing species that are not described in the taxonomic tree of specimens that we should study the ascendance or descendants or inheritance. Third, if it's not possible to mention the, correlation, the relationship of the species, then we have the opportunity to accept and recognize that we are before bodies of species that do not correspond to strictly in, in what exists in science currently. This is something that we should consider to, to analyze these bodies before they degrade so that we can have more knowledge, more information to what we're seeing and to be able to classify them as uh, what they are. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. to the University of Ica. The University of Ica is the most important in the area where these bodies were found. That's why they are there. They have been there since 2019. They've been investigating these bodies for four years. Can you think, just for a second, that 11 scientists will, would sign a letter saying that these bodies are real after four years of investigations if they were not. Okay, let's go to Fernando Correa, a reporter who has been participating in this investigation from the very beginning with me. We went together to Peru in 2017. Okay, Fernando, go ahead. Thank you, Jaime. How are you today? I'm Fernando Correa Domingos. I'm here live and directly from the University of San Luis Gonzaga in the uh, city of Ica, Peru, where we received these bodies and they have been investigated since August of 2019. We will go directly with Dr. Roger Zuniga, who has been the main researcher, uh, coordinator of uh, investigators, and we will speak about the pterodactyl body named Maria. This being, go ahead, Dr. Zuniga. What are we seeing here? We are seeing a body, desiccated body named Maria. This was delivered 1st of August of 2019. Since that date, we started investigating and we found the surprise that it is a body that has no comparison to any human being or sapien body. It's a different body, exceptional, that is no comparison to any species that it is existing right now. Definitely that it is three dactyl, that it has three hands in, three fingers in hands and feet. It's uh, one of the features that are uh, impressive and also the head that is long. What else? We can see in the description also the body, the head fundamentally in the extremities in the upper body. We can see the head that is a different head from the human being. It is a long head with uh, the forehead completely uh, sent like to the back of the part. Uh, we, it also has a different things that are similar to reptiles. It is scaled and it doesn't have a hair. It has never had hair because there's no, no part that we can see that it had hair. There's also the side that it doesn't have an ear. It has the hole so that he can most certainly hear when he, she was alive. And 
or it was alive. Then we have the eyeball, uh, or the eye, where the eye should be, that is very big, and it had maybe eyes that came out of the body, and the eye socket is too big, and here we all can also see, and it's very important that it has its lower teeth over the upper teeth. It's similar as other non-human beings like anthropoids. Also, we have in the upper body extremities, we have three fingers, and these fingers are completely original, authentic, because it has never been manipulated. They have no uh, assembly or um, any type of uh, glue, right? We have these fingers, three fingers with four phalanges in each finger. And in the arm, there's a separation that is not human from the radius and cubit, cubitus, that we can also see the radius that is completely different. Here, we can see the finger. This finger is about to fall. And we can see a tendon. We can see the end of the fingers, of the phalanges also here. This is about 90 degrees, and this allows us to know that this being ha could walk, and he could, he did not put the entire foot on the floor, but only the fingers. And also, we can see The fingerprints also, uh, and at the end we will see that it is completely different from the human. The fingerprint is horizontal and it is not like ours. That is like circles. So we here, we have the body that no one has assembled, modified, falsified is completely natural and the, body, the world should know that we're showing something that is real. So that the body, the people know that it's not only us who live, we are not alone. We are accompanied by beings that are different from us. It, According to the carbon 14, it is from 1,700 before Christ, after Christ, AC, and like a thousand years uh, old, and it is something that we should uh, see. Uh, let's get back. Also, let's call Dr. Edgar Fernandez that also participated, please, so that we can hear his explanations and the first thing that we will ask so thanks Dr. Edgar I'm a radiologist and I would like to start an anatomist I would like to start with the hands and I would like to ask you through the studies that you have been perform performing to this Body, have you found something that it has been manipulated? Well, we saw s things that are similar to human beings and different to th human beings. For example, the hands, the three fingers, and there's a separation of the radius and cubitus. And on the tibia, there's also something so particular. The backbone is completely different. If you have these samples, can you please help us if we can see detail? Uh, something common 
from the people that do not support this type of uh, research tell that this was modified, right? But to make sure I made a test with this human foot and what we can see that is completely different are the joints. As you can see, the different steps and we can see the, the, man the manipulation. When there's a radiography of hands and foot, we can see that maybe a normal person cannot see this, but a radiologist can realize that this is completely different. This also happens with the hand. We can see the first, uh, we, we took out the first and last finger and we can see the differences that here, we can see that here there's a manipulation. With the extraction of fingers, with the different uh, um, considerations, we, we can see that there has been a modification, something that we should know also. If you can show us or describe, doctor, here something that we have is completely different. Here, there's a head study to show as scientific evidence this is the head of Maria. It has something human and something different for this cephalometric or head study. There's diameters, something that is used as craniometric uh, points to measure the head and it is something, it's a diameter that is not considered human. And this is something that is considered uh, to be able to, m to see the measures, normal measures. And the skull and the face, as we can see, is completely different uh, than the human. In the human, the normal volume of skull and face is one. This is a human, one of one. And in Maria, we can see the difference of the skull is 1,995 cubic centimeters. And we can see that there's an increase of a 30% of head mass and it is something that this specimen has and it can be bigger, right? We can see that it is bigger. The next slide says that it has also an alteration according to the face. The maxillary is completely in front of what we call a protrusion to the maxillar face and the angle is the normal one is 82 right and the one of Maria is 108 what we can see it does it is that it's displaced to the front and it is something that is completely different we also find that it was completely different it's, it has prognatism and it has two conditions. These two conditions are not that common in human beings. And this is something that is telling us that it is not a human being. Also, something important it is the socket, the eye socket that normally this socket should be smaller. And it is something that we can see that the orbit is on a certain way out of the body. This is the face of Maria. It has an eye protrusion. 
And aside from all of the technical definition, scientific de definition, uh, this is something that we showed you. And to continue with the dynamic of this presentation, let's call Dr. Daniel that is one of the specialists that has been closer to Maria, this specimen, so that he can explain all of the details. If you can please stand here. What is your specialty? I'm professor of the medicine department and I'm retired. This is great, and before we start, I want to thank so much for allowing me to be here on December 4th of 2019, around 2015, they brought to my diagnosis center a specimen together with others for radiographic to take radiographies, and this body our specimen characterized uh, called as Maria has three basic segments, the skull, the thoracic abdominal, and the extremities. And you can see in the upper part of the skull, it's divided in two core parts, the cranial area and the base of the cranium and in the skull you can see the internal and the external part separating a radiological image of the um, spine medulla and then we can have the radio transparent parts in the base of the cranium in the f in the medium and the front and the back floor, you can see the Turkish uh, seat that has the hypothesis. So this specimen had internal secretion. The hypothesis regulates all the endocrinological system of a human being. In the face, we have the upper maxillary with the teeth, and in the bottom maxilla, we have uh, the the neck and the cervical neck cannot be seen very well because of the position. In the thorax, we can see the backbone, and in the upper part, we can see the upper extremities and the inferior extremities that have been intercrossed, intertwined, and calling the attention of the upper extremities and the hands that have only three fingers, and on the backbone, we can see four, in between D78, the intervertebral spaces, they uh, diminish, and with the dactylar, what indicate that this backbone has had acquired alterations. Thank you so much, Dr. Daniel Mendoza. We continue with this dynamic because we have a couple more minutes here in NICA, and we're going to call Dr. Suniga so he can be the one that will give us a very accurate summary of the results of the specimen regarding the DNA results. Tell us, please. What I wanted is to add that all the DNA results have been done by university, but the DNA is a test that has been done not in the university, and the re results have been uh, biotechnological information. And I would like to add uh, this is uh, where everybody in the can see the results, and I'm going to show you the specimen, Maria. And here you can see the results. There's four genomas. First of all, the mommy, if we did a DNA test, it has 1,800 years ago and 1,700 years ago. It has four different genomas. 30% DNA is human. 30% of a combination of chimpanzee with 
a bonobo and a 30% uh, of an unknown DNA. This is natural because we have seen in the right-hand side where we have a hybridation of the genoma, but done in the lab, where we've put the genoma of human beings in combination with chimpanzees, but that's been done in the lab. It's not reproducible. So in this occasion, as member of the research team of these um, bodies, we are inviting scientists to add to our research to do another research of DNA, therefore we could continue um, giving, adding to science. And to conclude, we're going to go quickly to the images of the Dactyler um, fingerprints and Dr. Suniga. Uh, we are about to send the signal to the city of Lima, the capital of Peru, but an important difference here, Doctor, is the Dactyler, uh, the fingerprints Here we have the feet, and there you can see that we visibly have the lines that are horizontal. They are not in spirals as human beings uh, in these fingerprints. Here we can see it more clearly. These are fingerprints, and we can clearly see that there is no similarities to humans, and that is what we wanted to inform you that in other occasions, we had a larger base, but here we can see the fingerprints. For example, with gorilla, you have koalas and mans. And uh, it is uh, very similar. They're spiral, but in Maria and the other bodies have no similarities on their fingerprints with these anthropoids. Thank you so much, Dr. Roger Suniga. Without precedence, you saw it. And this, uh, we're going to give you the um, signal back. Um, Fernando Correa Martinez, investigator journalist, will continue in Lima, Peru. Please stay. There's more to show you. And we're going to verify if the, con the link is connect this available. And uh, we are still here. From one moment to the next, we are going to go with our research uh, colleague, George Mantia. And I'd like to take advantage to congratulate scientists, doctors, and uh, uh, the doctors of ICA at the Luis Gonzalez Hospital. Thank you. We're transmitting from the city of Lima. And the, they have given us their facilities to take the tomography so the body can look at these uh, trigalactic bodies, if you can move them so the audience can see. This is called Sebastian, and this is called Santiago. We're estimating that Santiago is younger. This is Sebastian. But the knowledge of science, why have they been modulated? The scientists have always said that these bodies, and we have an expert, we have a forensic expert, and we have a diagnosis, and they are revealing. So we have Dr. David Wills and Dr. Ricardo Nicama one of the most important specialists and physicians. How are you? And these conditions are a little bit tight in the place. Good afternoon. 
What is the diagnosis that you can obtain by seeing this body? What we can observe is where the tomography in this tomography is the eye socket is larger that is inside socket in both sockets. You can see the area of the zone is a nose that has very small openings. When you see the bone structure that it has all the constitution of a skull that is very similar to a human skull. Here you can see the mandibula. What calls our attention are the metal plates. We're going to zoom towards um, towards the neck. This is similar to some implants that we have been able to find. These are implants over the body that we have found in other creatures. It had bone growth around it. In, the, in Cusco. So Sebastian, what it has is two impacts in its clavicular. So when we do this reconstruction, we can see two other metallic structures in the neck in both collarbones. This is impressive. This definitely is something different. This is what we can underscore at the level of the eye sockets as well as, as around the, the collarbones. Here we have, see the head and the neck. The fact that there are three fingers is uh, something that has been deviated. So these, after three years of residential of residency, what I can tell you is the manipulation that could happen in these fingers. These fingers are complete. They have not been manipulated. There is no sign that they have been manipulated. There is no question that these are three dactylous bodies. Here you can see the hands and the feet of Santiago because between We can see different age that uh, Santiago and the other body have different ages. So one would be between seven and nine. So we have a perspective of our human paradigm. But there's no signs of having been like uh, any fingers being removed. These images don't show any signs of having removed the fingers. The whole articulation is coherent with three fingers. So this is a correlation in an interbone 
correlation and there's no evidence of any bones to have been removed, not even post mortem. This is totally discarded. If they talk this way, it means that they have no idea of human anatomy, pre-mortem or post-mortem. Simply saying this is a mutilated body and this is another fraud is not true. We are experts in plastic surgery and I'm the president of the Legal Medicine Peru and they belong to the body that we're seeing. And now please show us Sebastian this part because we, we thought initially that the, the neck had a lesion because of the metal on the neck to put it together, the head with the body, but there's no evidence showing us that there was any problem there. But remember also that the, fre the tissue holds the body. So when it's dry, this that you see in the bodies loses uh, the humidity because of the, the atomite uh, earth that dried it. And it has an absence of the sternum. And also, where I so was surprised that ribs joined towards the front, like in a circle. In Vamos a ir desplazándonos a la otra, al otro ambiente donde estamos con los cuerpos, porque vamos a, a tener un acercamiento de ellos. Una cosa, como hemos dicho, los científicos pueden opinar de su casa, desde el móvil, sentados en cualquier lugar, y hacer comunicados y decir que esto es falso. Sin embargo, ninguno ha tenido el valor, y se los digo aquí, desde Lima, no han tenido el valor como estos profesionales para poder acercarse a esta investigación y despejar sus dudas, porque ustedes pueden traer todas las dudas y cuestionamientos que quieran. La única manera de despejarlos es viniendo a hacer ciencia, viniendo a hacer investigación, a tomar muestras como lo están haciendo mexicanos, rusos, franceses, japoneses. Así que dejen. Acá tenemos los cuerpos, aquí está Santiago. Aquí está Sebastián y acá tenemos la opinión del doctor Anicamo una vez más, por favor, sobre, sobre por ejemplo, esta cabeza que hemos visto que parecería humana, pero también usted nota alguna otra característica. La tomografía, eh, ya con los cuerpos acá presentes, vemos eh, que son cráneos un poco más alargados que lo que normalmente se ve en la, en la tomografía. ¿Vale? más grande de, de la bóveda craneana con respecto a es, hemos visto que es un, un niño aproximadamente de 5 años según la dentición mixta que hemos encontrado y que al tamaño facial de este espécimen en el mayor vamos a desplazar un poquito la camilla para que podamos acceder a, a ajá, hacia allá para ver no. Me gustaría, eh, colega Ricardo, que vieras este segmento, que no es, eh, ahorita me puso los lentes, pero yo los he visto con lupa, acá se ven las huellas digitales transversales, igual que en la momia amarilla. Las huellas digitales eh, no se ve como de los humanos, tú, 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 pero en la foto las puede, se pueden ver nítidamente, ¿no? Son huellas digitales transversales, paralelas para, y, y transversales 
del longitudinal del dedo. Es una cosa única. Creo que es más es la longitud de, de los dedos, ¿no? Que definitivamente sí es diferente pues, a, a, a la que los humanos pueden presentar. ¿no? Son dedos muy alargados, tanto de los, los miembros inferiores. ¿Se podría decir, doctor, que este cuerpo, esta, estos pies son muy extraños, no solamente porque son de tres dedos, sino porque la mitad casi es planta y la otra mitad es dedo, ¿no? Prácticamente 50. Sí, es, esta proporción es, es diferente. No, exactamente. Y con lo que a mí respecta, en la parte de, 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 de cabeza y cuello, vemos pues la ubicuidad de, de, de los ojos, que es sumamente diferente, ¿no? Más o menos 45 grados. Eh, de implantación eh, en relación a la implantación del canto externo con el canto interno, sumamente oblicuo. Y unas fosas nasales muy pequeñas, eh, un poco anchas incluso, parecidas a los primates, eh, podría decir. Exacto. Hemos encontrado ADN de dos simios ¿no? incorporados en el ADN de María, ¿por qué no podría tener una proporción similar? ¿no? Seguramente cuando se le haga el curso... técnico, profesional, y la verdad que estamos muy satisfechos desde aquí de poder haber aportado esto. Invitamos a los científicos del mundo, a los catedráticos, a los profesionales de distintas universidades, a que se interesen un poco más en conocer esto. No le hagan caso, lamentablemente, a mis colegas de la prensa, que están siguiendo el guión del Ministerio de Cultura. No sé qué muñecos van a inventar ahora los del Ministerio de Cultura para tratar de compararlos con estos seres extraordinarios. Este es un hallazgo único en la historia y nos evidencia que hemos tenido convivencia con otras especies que no corresponden a la evolución humana. Otras especies que nos van a hacer cambiar de paradigma y por favor, simplemente busquen la información y la van a encontrar. Muchas gracias desde aquí. No sé si tienen alguna consulta. Regresamos a transmisión a la ciudad de Los Ángeles en California. Estuvo con ustedes Joyce Mantilla desde Lima, Perú. un gran número de personas que han estado involucradas en este extraordinario descubrimiento. Más de 50 científicos han tenido acceso a los cuerpos, ninguno que los ha investigado. Not one that has investigated these bodies has thought that these bodies are not real. Not one. 50 scientists so far. And I believe it's enough proof that this is a real finding and this finding has to be known by the world. Okay, uh, you want to do your conclusions, please. Actually, Adam, did you want to come up first and then we'll conclude this? So uh, second to last person speaking today is Adam Curry. Adam Curry is very well known in the scientific community and a real pioneer when it comes to um, researching and investigating new technologies. So over to you, Adam. Good afternoon. I'll keep it brief, but I wanted to start with a few quotes. And these are quotes about breakthrough scientific discoveries from authorities in the past. Quote, Louis Pasteur's theory of germs is ridiculous fiction, said Pierre Pache, physiology professor in 1872. The abdomen, the chest, and the brain will be forever shut from the intrusion of the wise and humane surgeon, said Sir John Erickson, the chief British surgeon, 1873. Heavier than air flying machines are impossible, said Lord Kelvin, who was the president of the Royal Society in 1895, just a few short years before the Wright brothers actually took flight. Computers in the future may weigh no more than 1.5 tons, said Popular Mechanics in 1949. I could keep going, but the point is that <coughs> when it comes to breakthrough scientific discoveries, sometimes 
the officials get it right, but sometimes the officials get it very wrong. I had the opportunity to no participate in Entonces some of the activities in Mexico and Peru as, eh, as an independent Peru observer. And when I became satisfied of the seriousness and scientific credentials of the investigators involved, and that the specimens were indeed authentic anomalies, I realized that we might be dealing with something similar. This is a breakthrough scientific discovery in its early stage. Y ahora, nosotros vimos y supusimos que estas que se hizo un análisis de terceros Me quiero disculpar, pero no se escucha absolutamente nada de lo que el hombre está diciendo. Podemos corroborar los hallazgos del equipo. En cuanto a que son transparentes en compartir su información y que colaboran. Y una cita más. Se dijo que primero increíble, después era ridículo. Y muchas veces los descubrimientos científicos no son aceptados en un inicio. No debemos de repetir el ciclo. La curiosidad, la curiosidad humana es muy importante. Vamos a explorar y a lo mejor vamos a encontrar los descubrimientos más interesantes. Muchísimas gracias. Nosotros no podíamos esperar para ir a México y ver estos cuerpos. Y después nos confrontamos con cuerpos y nos confrontamos con cuerpos que nos choquearon. Después nos acercamos. Los estudiamos con gran escrutinio, sus músculos. Cada segundo que nos acercamos a ellos y estudiamos, los estudiamos. Esta, nos dimos cuenta que era una, una historia que se tenía que contar. Estos seres vivieron, respiraron y se movieron en este mundo. Los científicos y los políticos y todos en el mundo están tratando de entender si fue o no fue real. 
and that means someone is required to demand more of you. You know, uh, many of the conversations we've had, we, we've actually likened to people that have suffered abuse before. Imagine having suffered abuse and going to tell people about it and being told that, no, you weren't abused, that's not real. That's the energy that we've been feeling with these beings. They are no longer with us. They have passed away, but somebody has to have a voice for them, and that's all we're trying to do right now. So we're here to say that this is not a hoax. This is real. We don't know what they are. We don't know where they're from. We don't know who or what created them, but they are real. There are so many of them there. It's undeniable. And one of the greatest things for us, the greatest gift, I guess, that we got to receive when we went to Peru was that we got to meet these doctors and these scientists that are so passionate about proving the authenticity of these characters. These people don't need fame. They don't need fortune. They don't need to lose their jobs and their careers. Jaime, Jaime, Jaime is an iconic legend whose name has been completely defamed in the media. But we're here to tell you that everything that you've heard about these, so, these beings so far in the media is not true. So all that we ask is that you keep an open mind. That instead of listening to gossip and hearsay, you listen to the science. You listen to your scientists and you listen to your doctors. And if anybody here has any contacts in the scientific world here in America, we implore you to share this live stream with them and to ask them to come forward. Jaime and his team are able to give actual specimens of these beings to anybody in the scientific community that is bold enough to go against what society has been saying and actually do the work and do the research to figure out what these bodies are and where they came from. But I want to thank all of you once again for being here today and having that open mind and having that excitement about the fact that we've discovered something. We don't know what it is but it's really freaking cool. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, first of all, I wanna thank Michael, Masola, and Serena. Thanks to them. <laughs> this really happened. Without them, probably this could have not happened. I wanna tell you now what is next. Uh, We're gonna have a press conference in Peru the 4th of April, very reputable scientists from America, R very reputable, I mean, top scientists from America are gonna be there, are gonna study the bodies one-to-one, uh, -one, face to face, and they probably, I hope, will give the results in this live stream, if you wanna follow the 4th of April, because this is not gonna finish here. We will continue fighting and presenting this to the world. I hope the media, you are welcome to come to Lima the 4th of April at the Sheraton Hotel, 10 a.m. in the morning. Um, probably you will be able to witness if the Peruvian governments allow us to have the bodies there, if they don't confiscate them, we will present them to everyone, anyone who wants to see them, especially the media from the US, from around the world. This is huge, this is big. As a journalist, I tell you, this is the biggest story that I have found in 50 years, 50 years. I am an honest investigative journalist. I became head of 60 Minutes, anchor of 60 Minutes in Mexico, I, I, I work very close to Mike Wallace and the people there, okay? I have had a program for the last 25 years in the Mexican TV. It's 25 years old, this program. I also have a newscast from Monday to Friday. I am a journalist. I wanna tell you this. I am not a ufologist. I am not an enthusiastic of UFOs. Stop saying that about me. I am a journalist, pure journalist. I've been recognized in, in the Capitol Hill. I've been recognized in the UN. I have won three times the National Award on Journalism of Mexico. And I have rec been recognized by the, the journalists in Spain, for, uh, by the UN, as I said, and many others. Because I am a journalist. But when they want to reduce this 
finding they say, oh, it's a UFO enthusiast. The controversial Jaime Maussan. Why uh, am I controversial? Because I say the truth? Is the truth controversial? Then I am controversial. Otherwise, I am honest, I am ethical, I have never been corrupt. I can be wrong, I accept that, but I never lie. And that's very important for me to say it because I am tired of being called of the, all that adjective. It's not fair for a journalist. And I, I wanna thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I wanna thank you for coming here. I hope all the people, all the media that didn't come, but follow this through the internet, realize how much you lost not being here. Because this is important. It's not about us. It's about the people. It's about the reality and the future and the past. Just consider for a second that this is real. Just consider for a second these are realities. Everything would change. And that's what the anthropologists and archaeologists of Peru doesn't want that to happen. And it's time to know the truth. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed here. I, th I hope you felt that you are now part of history, and I hope you will continue reporting this because it's very important. Thank you. <laughs> I think that, do you wanna say something? Thank you, thank you. Thank you, can you hear me? Thank you very much everyone for coming out. It means a great deal to all of us. Uh, my name is Dan Harari. I had the honor to do the uh, public relations and help Michael and Serena with today's event. And uh, it was pretty re remarkable. Thank you for going out on a limb with us because this is real. This stuff is real. Before we do Q&A, is Dr. Peter Hauser here? Is that you from UCLA? We'd love to talk to you after. Well, can you? We're gonna do Q and we're not doing Q&A? Okay, okay. Um, I'd love a group photo in front of the signage for the press, we got Jaime over there, and then everyone's available for one-on-one -on -one interviews. I'm here, I will help you as best I can. Can we move the chairs? We'll move the chairs out here. We'll do some interviews in front of the signage, which I think is the way to go. And again, thank you very, very much for coming, and I'm here to help you. One last thing, guys. Uh, our colleague, uh, Martin Acarica, has published a book in Spanish about uh, these beings, and we're gonna play a uh, a quick promo for that. Thank you so much for being here. Al abrir el expediente, se encontrarán con una historia de dolores, contratiempos, abusos y difamaciones, pero también de éxito, de satisfacciones extraordinarias por la ya comprobación científica lograda en los análisis de los cuerpos no humanos. Albert Camus, premio Nobel de Literatura, decía que el papel del escritor no puede ponerse al servicio de quienes manipulan la historia, sino de la verdad. Yo no puedo acomodarme a la mentira ni al servicio del desconocimiento. Tampoco soy partidario del engaño ni de la manipulación, donde los negacionistas, los detractores, en su ignorancia y desesperación, hacen de la desacreditación su deporte, pues son soldados de la anticiencia, queriendo fortalecer el imperio de la ignorancia. En la lucha vulnerable pero tenaz, nace expediente abierto, impetuoso por la verdad, muestra las interrogantes científicas más apasionantes de la historia, acerca de nuestro origen y cuyas respuestas son más insólitas de lo esperado. Contiene evidencias de un hallazgo sin precedentes, estudiado ya por especialistas, científicos e investigadores de todo el planeta. Se trata de una especie que aún no hemos descubierto viva. ¿Es quizá la prueba de vida en otros planetas? Expediente abierto, cuestiona nuestro pasado y quizá nuestro futuro como raza humana. Te maravillarás con la inmensa posibilidad de que en efecto somos polvo de estrellas.